In this bonus episode of Fictional Hangover, we talk about meeting Ernie Hudson, partying at the Covered Bridge, and using our powers of manifestation in our chat about Anna Dressed in Blood with Kendara Blake. Hey everybody, welcome to Fictional Hangover, a podcast about young adult and new adult, and sometimes other books, series, authors, voice actors, and illustrators that is full of spoilers. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. And today we're going to talk to Kandara Blake, author of Anna Dressed in Blood. Oh, for the She's our queen. seventh She's our time? Queen. This At least. <laughs> it's amazing. We love her so much. We love her so we much. We do. Oh, how is it the seventh time? How? You're, you're the winner. You've been here well, since the beginning. I would say it's your fault for being prolific, but, you know, keep up the good work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, um, I was counting them up, and I excluded that one that it was just the two of us, like, a hundred years ago. I completely forgot about that one. I was like, holy shit, no, she did, like, that whole thing with me. So, no. Gosh. But wow. but but not half an hour ago you were you were just saying well, we have to read the sequel yes and the still champions of fate yes and the other buffies because we and never the buffies yeah you just you have so many good things and we're slightly obsessed with all of them it's at that well, point where I... we can just we have to awkwardly say do you want to just move in it, it would be easy you've left you know, you've got your spare undies. You have a toothbrush over here and a towel that you regularly use. You might as well just move in. I mean, you know, honestly, at this point, there's really only one reason I write the books is so that I'll have an excuse to, you know, come on here and talk with you guys like once a year. So, like, uh, yeah, I need to release a book next year or how will I go on Fictional Hangover? We might you need got- to invent more excuses for me to come on here because, you know, like when I retire, what's going to happen? Yeah. Well, wow. like... then you just come on as the Would You Rather guest, like all the yeah, time. Yeah, I've got Champions in... of Fate to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you and the Buffy book. Yeah, you can just one. be like a third host. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Like in our, you know, in our retirement, when we're yeah. all like fifty, it'll be great. Yeah, it will be. It will be. Look, I started reading. I haven't finished it yet, but I started reading the um, the story in the back of the new version of Anna. Ooh. And, like, they have a podcast, and they go do stuff. So, yeah, that's just, we're just, that's going to be us. Yeah. I did appreciate, yeah. though, even though I haven't finished it yet, I did appreciate that they, um, that the one podcast, the Ghostbusters one, is half half cosplay. Half podcast, and I was like, "Oh, I feel like that was written for me, even if it wasn't. I feel like it was written for me." No, I it was fully seen. inspired, fully inspired by by you guys because it you're it truly is. You do, you know. I feel like it's a half and half kind of situation. Whenever I see your posts up on Facebook, I'm like, "Oh, look at that one!" And it's nice to see Claire is joining in too. Like, there's been a lot of, you know, good costuming from yeah. the two of you lately we, we've, we've got a couple of plans coming up for december as well so hopefully yes and if i don't dress up as anna what's the point of my life so i mean happening it's, it's kind of it now. right up your alley yeah. you know there's yeah. a lot of blood and um and she has dark yeah. hair which thank you yeah. mm-hmm. long, long dark, dark hair mm-hmm yeah yeah. Thanks. It's, it's the role you were born to play. Yes. It's the role I will die to play, I think, is probably better. Um, so one more thing I'm before we get in. I'm going to come you then, if that's the case. Yeah, that's fine. Um, one more thing before we start, would you rather? I, um, in our initial thoughts of this episode, you know, I, I mentioned that I read this book when it came out, which was now 11 years ago. It's like so. Ugh. Like my, my, I told so Claire old. like so m- my love affair with Kendara Blake started so long ago. I've been obsessed I, the whole time. I couldn't believe. 
how long it's been when they when they came to me and they're like, "Hey, you want to do an anniversary edition?" I'm like, "It's a little late. It'll it won't come out for until it's like you know year twelve or something." And I'm like, "Oh my god, it's it's been that long." But thank you, <laughs> thanks thanks for wanting to do an anniversary edition, which I do think they did a really really great job. Yeah, the cover's it's so quite pretty. pretty. It's quite pretty. Yeah, I'll find out eventually. I know. I'm sorry. It's in the mail this week. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm the worst at post. Anywho. Anywho. Is it time for <laughs> Would You Rather? Should we play Would Yes. We should play yes. Would You Yes, we should. Yes. Yes, we pew, should. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> okay. Um, I think everyone knows that Kendara is joining us for this one. But hey. Hi. That's because she's... you told everybody your creepy origin story and you're... Shut up. It's fine. Shut up. Yeah. Shut up. It's fine. It's fine. She's She knows about it. She's fine. You're doing a cas right now. You're denying I know. the love affair. I'm blushing. You're scuffing ah. into the. You're blushing. You're covering your face. You're scuffing Nobody. with your little, with your toe. You actually oh, figured that out. Oh my, oh my god! Really? Oh, oh. I love it's him. So you odd. shut up. <laughs> it's fine. Go oh, calm down. It's fine. Anywho. Okay, let's go. Let's move on. Let's play. This is potentially the most Amanda question we have ever asked. Oh. Oh, oh. We asked on social media of the original Ghostbusters, would you rather be Egon, Ray, Peter, or Winston? On Facebook, the winner was Egon with 32%, followed by Ray and Peter, joint, and then Winston. On Instagram, Egon won with 67%, followed by Ray, and on on threads, Egon won with 67% followed by Winston. So my main take from that is people don't like Peter. That's so crazy. I know. Because I mean, he carries the movies. Is... I mean, he's so, you know, he's like the charismatic one. But he's a bit of an asshole. He's the cool one, but also maybe the most useless scientist. So He's, a, he's the most useless. And he's a massive misogynistic pig. Yeah, he, he he relies on the others to get the job done. Yes, yeah. but he is the charismatic one. I will grant you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he does, yeah. you know, get the Sigourney Weaver in the end, right? Anywho, we have to decide. Well, Amanda or has already decided. There is Let's no other some, option for me. There is no other option for you. Let's get some comments because that may help decisions. Bree on Facebook said, I'll pick Ray. He's the best balance of able to adapt to social situations, passionate as a personality and also super smart. That's a good answer. Colin on Facebook said, I always wanted to be Egon when I was younger. Peeker would irritate the hell out of me, so he's right out. As I've grown older, I think I'd like to be Ray. He's the most relatable of the fictional characters. I can't be Winston because I'm just not cool enough. <laughs> Coral on Facebook said, I mean, Peter got a pretty hot girlfriend that got possessed and had a great attitude about it. So it has to be my heart always. I love that response. <laughs> Candy on Facebook said, Egon is my favorite and always will be, but I feel like my personality is totally Peter Venkman. Mm -hmm. Cody on Facebook said, uh, Murray, but I don't have to shock a device. Lol. And then we have a comment from you, Kandara. Someone needs to want to be Ray. <laughs> Feel bad for him, and he's so wholesome. But then Candace followed up with, I love Ray and would totally be him. He was so he was just so lagging in the early polls. He was really like, was. Oh. So I'm I'm pleased to hear that he staged such a comeback. Yeah. He did. He really did. Um, however, we finish off with Lorraine on Facebook who said, Egon has always been the love of my life. Oh. Amanda, just get it out of the way. I have a lot to say about Ghostbusters because I'm obsessed with Ghostbusters and I have the life-size Vigo the Carpathian on my wall upstairs. Obsessed. I have two answers to this question. One is the only real one, and that answer is Winston because I used to pretend to be him when I was a kid. And I told Ernie Hudson that when I met him at a horror convention. He, I was like, you know, this is going to be really weird for me to say, but I used to pretend to be you when I was a kid. Obviously, we have some physical differences. <laughs> but he said, you know, if I told people that I pretended to be you, they would think I was weird too. So it's okay. And I have his signature 
I have, I have his autograph upstairs. So I have to choose Winston. But the second half of that is I also love Egon because there is a photo from my father in the 80s or early 90s and he looks fucking exactly like Egon and it's creepy. So I need to share that photo so everyone can see it because it's weird. Yeah, totally. It's weird. Yeah. I love um, the actor that plays Winston. You just said it. Ernie Hudson. The Ernie Hudson, yeah. Love him. He's so great. And like now, if you're watching the new ones with the original cast, like he's arguably the most successful. He is he is running the show. So I gotta pick Winston. I saw the new one once and I, I was just delighted, you know, obviously to see that it was a continuation and not like an utter reboot. But I don't remember. All I remember is that Egon had died, which was a huge bummer. But of course, Harold Ramis had died. So yeah. I that's the way to go. But I don't remember what all the other guys were up to. But in the first movies, I mean, Ernie Hudson had some fantastic lines. Like he was so, you know, yeah. he was the Ghostbuster that we all would have been had we come not from the science side and just like stumbled into this. Like, yeah, exactly. I still love that. What did he say? I've seen shit that will turn you white. Oh, <laughs> oh I love him. So I love good. him. He's an underrated Ghostbuster. Like, everybody remembers Egon, Ray, and Peter, but not Winston. And it's He's underrated. It's not fair. True. Look, True. that Ghostbusters 2 is my first memory of seeing a movie in the theater. And it was the scene where they're underground and the ghost train goes through winston that's the first memory i have of seeing a movie like wow. in the theater so ghostbusters Aww. is important to me oh baby amanda so i know and look at my little stay puff marshmallow man on my shirt Very nice. Very but he's nice. but he's fighting godzilla so it doesn't really we just we just cover up godzilla stay puff is important <laughs> in this <laughs> I love Godzilla too. You know, yeah. that'd probably be an adorable fight. Um, yeah. Godzilla would get a few delicious bites in, but then I feel like, you know, they would just bond over being large. They would. They would become they would literally friends. bond because the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man is hella sticky. Yeah. Yes. He would just like stick himself yeah, to like, oh, Godzilla. Aww. Together forever. <laughs> Come in for a hug, but you're going to have to eat me to get away. Yeah. Well, you got to eat your way out. <laughs> yeah. It's all, all <laughs> Bye. Oh. Oh. That's what terrified me in like Ghostbusters Afterlife, you know, when the, the, the little staple of marshmallow men come to life. And I'm thinking, what was if you've just eaten one of those? It's gonna like fight its way out of your belly. Oh, but he's oh, been chewed been... up. It's fine. You can <laughs> swallow him whole. Yeah, but it's, it's just in like your stomach, that. being oh. digested, which is a process of sticking it back together and moulding it, and it's going to reform. It's going to be a... It, I have a, these it's thoughts, gonna be I'm a poop sorry. marshmallow that, <laughs> that jabs its way out. What a great conversation Ew. this is already. Yeah, and then you've got okay. a whole different problem because okay, let's not go down there. Right, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be I'm gonna be Ray because he ends up with a bookstore, and he's socially awkward, which I feel like I am. He talks too much when he's in those horrible socially awkward situations, which I do. Um, so yeah, 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 and can't have like coherent thoughts, which is obvious. <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. That's my answer. <laughs> nice. I'm not cool enough to be Egon. Nice. Very nice. What was your answer, Kendara? Oh! Did um, you just conveniently not answer it? Yeah, I totally <laughs> just got caught up in, like, hearing the poll results, and I thought that was... Uh, I would be Egon. Yeah. Cool. Well, we just need to find somebody to be Peter, and we've got ourselves some Ghostbusters. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds yeah, like well, there was that girl in the comments. She said she's very much like Peter, so we'll just grab her and it'll be fine. We'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Moving on. Carl would definitely play along. <laughs> would you rather be a ghost hunter, a psychic, a witch, or a practitioner of voodoo? <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be a witch. I mean, ghost hunting seems scary. 
and um, being a psychic just seems annoying. <laughs> you know, like people would be constantly bothering you for for information and like help me talk to my dead husband. I'm like, no, I got a grocery shop. So uh, I, yeah, I I'm not. I don't think I'm cool enough to do the voodoo. So just a standard witch. Mind my own business. A kitchen witch would be nice too. Mm -hmm. Like Kaz's mom. That's a cozy kind of witch that doesn't get into too much trouble, I think. Oh, well. Um, what are you going to be, Claire? Probably Ghost Hunter because we know how much I love ghosts and ghost stories and spooky things yeah and how much i love going on ghost hunts and i have never been scared on a ghost hunt yet yeah really oh yeah i was on one a couple of weeks ago and it was really interesting and that's probably the only time i've had anything quote unquote paranormal happen and i didn't even sense it there was a photograph taken which i'm trying to get hold of and between me and somebody else is this weird shimmery mist thing that's very strange um i'm trying to get a picture a copy of that picture which is the the cl closest thing to a paranormal um happening that's ever happened to me and i've been on a lot of ghost hunts and ghost tours and things like that so yeah just send us in there i'll go and get rid of the ghosts what whatevs man i'll be like Cass, totally chill get in my app me a man <laughs> I, feel, I think Amanda's gearing up. <laughs> I, just, I just feel like, based on, I don't know, just, just the general idea, which is probably, you know, completely incorrect, of all of those, I feel like the most evil would be the practitioner of voodoo, even though that's oh. that's not, that's not the answer. That's not. But, oh. Oh. Um, but I think that I would like to do that. Maybe I would like to be a witch doctor. Hmm. Yeah. And do some food. You want to go down the Dr. Facilier route? Yes. I'll have Princess and the Frog. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Be a shadow man. Yeah, I like it. Or a shadow woman. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to wear a top hat. I was going to say, can I wear a top have hat? Have a cane. Can I wear a top you hat? You got to wear the top hat. Okay. You got to have the, 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 the tails if you want and the cane. Yeah. Sold. Yeah. Dr. Facilier had, like, the look. Yeah. He had yeah. the, like. He was on point. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. Fashion towards okay. that pillow. I was rooting for him, to be fair. <laughs> Honestly, you know, he's got goals. He worked hard. Exactly. He did. Exactly. He did work yeah. hard. And he used the resource that was around him. It's not his fault that there were evil spirits that wanted to devour other people's souls. Right? I mean, he balanced it perfectly well until that damn little frog came along. <laughs> Stupid frog. Fuck that frog. Honestly. Frogs. Yeah, the, the, they're all ego. They can't be trusted. They can't <laughs> no. be trusted. No, you can't no. trust the frog. No mm -hmm. way. I, I, I am honestly of the belief that amphibians need to be watched. I mean, hello, can live in the water and on land. Really, really. Yeah. Pick one. And then there's some that like are up in the trees too. So that's also in the air. Yeah, I... they're everywhere. They're gonna take over the world. Definitely. <laughs> Jerks. Any. <laughs> Would you rather kill the hitchhiker ghost or the jerk spirit, which is not a frog in this instance, no. and his wife, or the police officer and the real road worker? I'm going to go with hitchhiker ghost. I like a, I like a, a good stereotype spook yeah. you're going on the bridge. And it was like a covered bridge in my mind, you know, old style covered bridge. Mm. Like you're doing like the Beetlejuice spin around in the covered bridge. <laughs> that happens, and then all of a sudden, the headless horseman just rides by because, of course, yeah, it's a, co Everything it's a, happens it's a, a covered bridge. bridge. Yes, yeah. and also, yeah. Nosferatu, you go through yeah, the covered the bridge, girl. yeah, and you come out you somewhere just be else. Spinning around there with yeah. Beetlejuice, and then the headless horseman would come up from the back, and then Vic would come through from the front on her bike, and you'd just be like, yeah. Okay. It's a party, really. Yeah. Yeah. Covered bridges are a party. That's where that's where it's at. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. like it. I like that idea. I didn't even think of that. I didn't picture a covered bridge. 
<laughs> this is because I love the spooks. Yeah, you've just instantly you've just changed everything in my brain. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say the jerk spirit and his wife because I feel like they deserve it the most. But I mean, if we're going to a party, a covered bridge party, then that's got to be the answer. I do love that ghost story though. The the hitchhiker on the side of the road. That's a really good ghost story. It's classic. Classic. Yeah. 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 I mean, the only yeah. thing better, I think, is the woman in white, which Anna is. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. And there's always a grey lady as well. Yeah. Yeah. Portents. Yeah. Well, and then there's you know that first episode of Supernatural does both. They combine the woman in white with the hitchhiking trope. Yeah. And so they've got the hitchhiking woman in white. So they just went all in from they the did. beginning. Like, they did. You guys didn't realize you were going to have. 15 freaking seasons <laughs> of hell to come back. Nope, cram it all into one episode. <laughs> but did all not right. bury the lead. Mm, yeah. Um, I could not do the hitchhiking ghost for the reason I, I wouldn't be able to do it and control a car at the same time. Like that ghost and I would have to come to a complete stop, you know, in an approved parking space before I could get any work done. Uh, I'm not a good driver. It's It would like, mm, 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 mm. So I'm gonna choose the the cop slash hostage that combined because I feel like that's just such a crappy situation for that hostage spirit to have ended up in that I wouldn't I, I wouldn't feel bad about that one at all because it would be, you know, really just setting them free. Like yeah. wherever you go, it's gotta be better than this. Yeah. Be free, slap. Yeah. Like, Cut yeah. off your hand, grow Sorry. another one. <laughs> you got a backup. <laughs> okay. Next question. Would you rather witness Mike's ghost reenacting his death or the ghost of the homeless guy reenacting his? AKA, would you rather see someone ripped in half or see someone's insides tumbling out? Oh, easy. Easy. Because Mike. And Will and Chase, who everybody forgets about, are dickiest absolute dicks. dicks. Yeah, the dickiest of dicks. I give zero shits. Mike's ghost can go and do whatever it wants over there. I want to see the insides tumbling out. I thought you were going to say you would want to witness Mike's death because you hate him so much. <sighs> nah, I'm so and you just want to watch it over and over and over again. Nah, nah, it's not worth my time. I'm not even going to take That's a photograph as proof of the paranormal. You know what? Damn. He's basic. He's basic. Oh, he's mm. he's a basic, basic bitch. bitch. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's my he, hell. He was. He was. He was very not not good. You know, like the bulliest of bullies, the yeah. dickiest of dicks. It's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would. I would also want to watch his death over and over, just because I feel like it's the showiest. You know, like splitting a person, woo, like that. That's flashy. It's almost like a curtain, you know, like a da da da, woo. And then there's like, you could, like, you could place them in front of like a TV before a movie starts. And then you could just, woo. And then the movie starts. And it's like a, a mic curtain that opens for you. So I feel like there's a lot more to do with just a vertically split person than, yeah. You know, I would just have to feel really bad every time I watch the homeless man. Um, because he just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. Like Mike, who who put himself there and then became a blood curtain. We Yes. Oh, blood curtain. That's the best. I, I, I can imagine you now as in the voodoo, like Top Hat, Tails and Kane. And then as soon as Mike comes out, you're like, you know, hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. Hello, my good time gal. And then I have oh, a dancing a frog with me as well. Because... For you as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, and it just tie like this whole episode together because you know, yeah, you've just mm -hmm. uh huh. I could bring Mike, you know, with and like cue it, and then there will be Amanda in full facilier. Yeah, Louis, uh -huh. Louis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm at the side with the lighting, getting it all right. Yes, That's great. good, good. You're just off to the side, not being afraid at all because. It's, I'm taking the pictures, the so thing. then I become the fam the famous paranormal investigator. Paranormal, mm -hmm. paranormal schmaranormal, yeah. That's what Claire says. It's the only the only thing Mike is good for is proving that ghosts are real. 
He's a dick. And guns. Yes. Because he's the dickiest of dicks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna go with the Mike Curtain, too. I mean, re- regardless of your fantastic idea of him being a Curtains, I, I would have picked him anyway, but, I mean, you just sold it. You sold it. <laughs> Yay! I should yeah. have him come back in, like, future future books. Just You should. It's at the start of every book. I should just open every book yes. with a Mike Curtain. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm now trying to figure out how Amanda could get this uh, the the highlight reel that she always does for an episode and opens up with with the, with the corpse it. being ripped in half. You know what? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna work on that. We'll see. Laying down the challenge. There we'll we go. see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can do last it. Last question. I know you can. I believe in you. Good luck. As a person who is not would you rather encounter Anna or the Orbi Man? I mean, I think there's only one answer, really, for me. Please see our discussion where we get a bit obsessed over Anna. <laughs> Ooh. I just want to be her. Man, as a person who's not Kaz, I feel like it can only go badly no matter what you choose. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's just going to go go badly so i mean do i want to be you know like have my neck broken and my insides torn out or do i want to be eaten Mm, good question i guess i'd i'd want to encounter anna i feel like she'd give me a cleaner death i don't want to be like you know like just devoured in big bites that sounds also he's very smelly he he does not have a good mouth odor Mm, yeah he's definitely got halitosis he does yeah. yeah but he does have really nice straight white teeth so yeah, I, mean, you know, I mean consider his diet his it's his breath is going to be not fabulous yeah he's just had a kitty appetizer do you really want to be the main course no, no. no. r.i.p tibalt no. r.i.p yeah i want to encounter anna too Mostly because of the smells. Is that so you can steal our dress so you, for the cosplay? Yes. Mm. <laughs> yes. I would think I would try to make friends with her, and it probably would not end well. But, you know, then I could be hanging out with her in there as a ghost. And when I come yeah. back constantly, right. because, you know, they, mm-hmm. keep, they keep coming back, I'll just be like, hey, I'm not going to haunt you. I'm going to be your friend, whether you like it or not. And then I'm going to blush, and I'm going to... You know, rub my toe in the dirt and be like, oh, I just really <laughs> like you. <laughs> yep. If you go with a copy of the Ghostbusters movies, uh huh, the Buffy box set, yes. the Supernatural box set, yeah, Back to the Future box set, yes, and go, Anna, we need to bond, and you need to watch these, yeah. And then by the time you've done that, you know, year of watching, mm-hmm. you'll be BFFs, yeah. Doing yeah. it. Sharing clothes, doing each other's hair. Yep, doing it. That's a good idea. You know, you've got to play the ghostly long game. Yeah. 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 And I mean, Don't we've got think about just the. I mean, I was being very short sighted, just thinking about my own imminent death. But you <laughs> you saw beyond it. Like, there are possibilities. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 Ghost I mean, I, 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 makes I, lemonade, you know? <laughs> makes lemonade out of lemons. That's. Yes. That's what I'm doing. And it's yeah. fine. Okay, so that's the end of Would You Rather. Very nice, tidy ending. But now we have other questions, and a lot of them are Ghostbusters related, and I'm not sorry about that one. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> Hashtag obsessed. Has, uh, the uh, little, you know, the little ghost with the, the red thing? He has it tattooed on his arm. So amazing. we're big Ghostbusters peeps in this house. It's amazing. Nice. It's amazing. So Amanda will be the librarian ghost when she de- when, uh, at, your, at your demise. I mean, I already kind of am. Just I'm waiting for your library to be finished, being you know built and getting books and stuff for you to actually do that. Yeah, me too. Full cosplay. Me too. I did do it once. You have. I did. Yeah. I and I painted the open mouth on my, and it was scary. I was the scary version, not the old lady with the bun version. It was good. It was. Uh, so, 
we wanted to, we wanted to ask have have you ever seen a ghost but then i was like nah claire we got to ask the whole question are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night do you experience <laughs> feelings of dread in your basement or attic have you or your family ever seen a spook specter or ghost so have have you ever have you ever seen a ghost no no and it's not for lack of trying um when i was researching anna my husband and I went up to Thunder Bay to do like location scouting and Thunder Bay, it's like the murder capital of Canada. And they have a lot of really good ghost stories up there actually. So some of the ghost stories that they talk about in the book are true Thunder Bay ghost stories as heard by locals. Um, and they, they point us to a few haunted places and you know, we went at night and I'd shove my husband out in the dark and be like, see if something happened, but nothing did. So. Yeah, he was like, see if what happens. I'm like, don't fall, it's dark. <laughs> so, unfortunately, no, I have mm. never. Yeah. I think I'm like the opposite of a ghost magnet. Some people- That's what I say! Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. I And, and, and I've talked to people about it and I've said, you have mediums, people, you apparently have mediums. I'm hashtag team skeptic who can talk to the dead then if you know by science there is the equal and opposite the people who will never ever encounter ghosts are basically like you know a void and that's me yeah I'm a have, you seen, have you seen the new movie um the new poirot a murder in venice or a haunting in venice yeah yes yeah yes yeah. i like that yeah i, I thought I it was like, that. like the best of those movies with him yes I did not care than... the Nile. That one was no. That one was or like really Express. like it... what? No. Yeah. It was too much mustache. It was too much about the mustache. Yeah. It's like everybody went crazy after um Orient Express and like, oh my god, look at the facial hair. So then he just made it all about the facial hair <laughs> and now he got back away from the facial hair. Yeah, like let's go back to a narrative. Not yes. not about yeah, how much no. wax that takes. <laughs> Yeah, you, know, you, you don't need too too much facial hair. It was not good. I also felt like the sec the second one was too sexy. There were like there were like sex scenes in that one, which is fine. I don't care about that, but I feel like it was just it didn't fit for me. It didn't. Mm. It didn't feel like an Agatha Christie. No, no, I don't. Mm. Wasn't for me, but I did like this last one. Plus, it had Tina Fey in it, and I love Tina Fey so. Yeah. So the writing was happy. The mystery was, you know, it felt it did. It felt very back to back to the original, like back to basics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, I do. Yeah. Um, I have only ever had one ghosty experience and it happened the same weekend that Claire absolutely did not have one, even though she says that she thinks she did with the with the photograph, which until we see the photograph there it's not it's not real. I, i'm waiting for the newsletter i'm hoping it's going to be in the newsletter so this was recent then yeah yeah so i am um, first it was the first happened? weekend in november yeah oh my god yeah okay. so um my husband and i went to eureka springs in arkansas it's like the most one of the most haunted places in arkansas it's where the crescent hotel is which everyone probably knows what the crescent hotel is but we didn't stay there we stayed in a bed and breakfast and i I was plugging my phone in to an extension cord that was under the bed. And like when I pulled the extension cord, it felt like there was resistance and it was weird. And I told Jacob, like, I am not plugging my phone up here because I just got really creeped out by it. So I'm plugging my phone in over here, whatever. And then we went to bed. And while I was sleeping, I had a like literal night terror of something reaching through the bed with claws trying to pull me through the mattress. And when I woke up from that, the um, motion detecting light in the bathroom came on. And then I was like, oh, no, Amanda, the motion light, it's always on. It's just a night light. It's always on. But then it went off. And then it came on again. And I was like, fuck, I'm not sleeping. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I have, I, have a, I have a coworker at the library, and she can see ghosts. And so I was telling her the story and she's like, oh yeah, you pissed that ghost off. He just wanted to play with you and you did not even look under the bed to see if he was real. Nuh-uh. He, you made him mad. 
You don't look under the bed. That's a basic thing. It's yeah. like if no. you, it's like letting any of your limbs dangle over the edge. Of course, no. you're going to get touched by a monster under the yeah. bed. You keep your arms and legs in the bed at all time. You do not look under the bed because that's how you get eaten. You guys yeah. don't immediately look under the bed the minute you check into a hotel room. No, are there murderers under there? There's murderers under there, aren't there? Do, just to make sure, because you know you hear the stories about like previous murder victims getting stuffed in the mattress. So I just want to make sure that I'm not dealing with that all night. Like I'm going to request a new room if that is. <laughs> so I always look like any feet. No. Okay, good. Most of the hotels I've, I've in thinking about are either divan beds. So there's no space for them or it's too small a gap. Which is a really flat ghost the under there. There's a flat Possibly. Guy. I do. I always check wardrobes. I always check closets and wardrobes to see if there's any... Showers? Uh, you know, potential crawl space holes. Oh, first thing I do is bust into the bathroom as well. But, yeah, it's not really like... I mean, in British hotels, not really any space for them. Mm-hmm. I did <laughs> once when I was working away... When I used to uh, have to travel for work quite a bit down to London. I was by myself all the time. Um... And I was staying in a hotel room and I creeped myself out because my imagination goes bonkers. So I put the TV on to fall asleep to the TV so I had something to drown the noise and give me a little bit of light. And I fell asleep to true crime stuff, which was a bad idea because then I started dreaming about serial killers and then I was convinced there was a serial killer in my bedroom and there was an L-shaped room. I had a hu- It was a huge room for one person. And it was an L-shaped room. And I was like, there's somebody around the corner. I know there's somebody around the corner. There's somebody definitely around the corner. And I could not get back to sleep because my brain went absolute overdrive. That's delightful. Yeah. It's not the only time. I mean, I've been convinced once that but I was poorly off work. And I remember hanging the washing outside and then leaving the washing and coming straight into the house because I was convinced there was a serial killer in the bushes. And my husband came home and he said, Claire, you've been watching women's serial killer programmes all week when you've been off sick. Let's change the ca- channel and put some cartoons on and you'll feel better. I was like, oh, okay, thank you. I always think about um, uh, Pennywise from It when, mm, you know, yes. seeing the washing out. Because yeah. you can't see on the other side of the washing, like there's a clown over there. There's a clown behind the sheet. 100% he's right there. Yeah. If I just look fast enough, he'll be there. Yeah. And he never is. No. Yeah. Ooh. Speaking of that, though, which Pennywise do you prefer, Tim Curry or Bill Skarsgård? Tim Curry, one hundred percent. Tim Curry. It's not like Bill Skarsgård is bad. He did a great job, and he does that freaking weird eyeball thing that he can just do. But <laughs> Tim Curry, he had the voice. He had the menace. I mean, he was delightful. He was one a delightful clown, and two a clown you would believe can kill you. So he had it all. Dead. <laughs> Tim Curry's the OG. Yeah. That's if if Ghostbusters is my or Ghostbusters 2, excuse me, is my like top favorite movie of the top five. Like the original it miniseries is probably like number three. It's good. Yeah. It's good. I like to rewatch it at least annually and order like a bunch of Chinese food for that scene. Yes. Um, ready with my fried rice. Like, here we go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fried rice and Tim Curry sounds like a good night. Just curry, <laughs> just curry fried rice. Oh. Mixed actual curry. Have curry. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I said yeah. it. I did like the remakes though. The remake movies were also very, very good. But you can't go wrong with the original. You can't. No. You can't. Also, like I know it was they were hokey, but the casting was spot on. I love little Jonathan Brandis as yeah. the original bill like i'd follow that kid into a sewer for sure yeah 100 <laughs> percent. i am glad that they left out that one scene yeah oh yeah uh <laughs> i was worried i was worried when they you know announced that they were making a they were doing a remake i was like oh my god are they going to include that scene are they going to include the the children group Ooh. sex scene <laughs> let's not let's uh nope. let's Skip continue it. to avoid that <laughs> Skip it. Yep. There are other ways out of there. There are, indeed. (laughs) Does not have to be. Gross. Child sex. Yeah, and he, in the the films, I feel like they leaned less into, because in the book, like, it's kind of said, like, 
the fact that they're the lucky seven kind of makes them a little bit mystical you know like eddie always knew how to get out of places and like he was like a human map and bev was the one who held them all together and and built like but there wasn't as i mean bev was the one who could mystically shoot um bill was the one who held them all together but in in the movies they didn't do that so there's like would have been literally no reason no freaking reason yeah no so yeah Oof. yeah let's 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 definitely not yeah <laughs> let's move good decisions were made finally yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um okay so then we just had that question about you know which which of those movies you like better so which of the ghostbusters movies um is your favorite Oh, it's really tough because like the first one, you know, but the second one, it hits a lot of great beats. Like there are a lot of cool supernatural um, special effects moments that for the time kind of like mind blowing. Yeah. Um, and I like Vigo. I, I like him. He, Vigo the carpet <laughs> was just a delight. A delightful concept to have in in a film. Yes. So I, I really can't choose between them. I I like them both because I mean Zool. Yeah. Vigo. Vigo Zool. It's it's a real. You no. Know, can't choose. Is it not just one big story though? Can I can I argue that point? It's not just one big story. So really, there isn't like a one and a two. You know, do you have to just have the one? I know, Amanda, you're going to say two, but you've got special memories attached to that one. So it is slightly different. But if you scraped away the Ernie Hudson, you know, fangirling <laughs> and desire to be and, you know, first movie memory, if you scraped it away, you yeah. can just say it's just one giant movie. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, and then you fine. don't have to pick. No. Because the two, the two brilliant bad guys, you know, the villains are... Chef's kiss perfect. Yes. Yeah, I don't think I'm, I don't. I, I did watch the the women one, and I don't know where, if it's called anything other than Ghostbusters, and it was fine. It, it was fine. It was missing that certain something, you know. They it was. yeah. They were missing some chemistry together or something. Um, the best part of that movie was Chris Hemsworth as as their bimbo, their bimbo <laughs> yeah. reception. It was yeah. the best part. That scene where he takes off the glasses and they don't have lenses. <laughs> it was brilliant. That was the only and, thing, though. But at least it, 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 you know, showcased his acting, like, comedy chops, which was good. Yes. Yeah. Afterlife, I will argue, is a brilliant movie. And I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for the next one. The and now I just can't. I just lost the title of it, but it's very chilly. Oh, they just oh. released trailers for it this week. Did they? Did they? Yeah, yeah. yeah There's a trailer for it out. Like it just came out. Frozen Empire. Yes, Frozen Empire. Interesting. Yeah, you need to watch the trailer. It Not it's good. The, uh, I thought it'd be more like honey about the death or ghosts or something. Frozen Empire. Not, huh? Yeah. That sounds very dramatic, doesn't it? Yeah, um, it's about this like mist that like freezes you with fear, and then and then you die, and like the trailer the trailer is super great, and it's got the original guys back in it, and it seems like they're going to be in it much more. Oh, delightful! Yeah, yeah. yeah. also Patton yeah. Oswalt is in it. I think. It yeah, I've just seen that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Numal is uh Janji's in it, James yeah, yeah, Caster and Emily Allen Lynn. I can't think of who she Yeah, I don't know. I wish we could have lured Rick Moranis back. Gosh, I know. Like he got punched in the face, I know. But um, you know, come on back. Yeah. We'll make sure nobody punches you again. Yeah. That was him not misremembering. Like for <laughs> he was punched in the face on camera in New York by like a mugger or something. Yeah. He was just like out on the street. I feel like he hadn't like been very reclusive after his wife died mm -hmm. and, and and i know that i'm misremembering and making the story up but i feel like it's like the first time he goes out of his house he's like going to the bank and there he gets punched in the face immediately like no nope. like no nope. man just go back uh, home he, 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 he would tie back out of the limelight quite early on though after it because it was when his wife died isn't it yeah 
It's been a long, long time. Yeah, it's very sad. But he was kind of like creeping back out, you know, he was making appearances. Didn't he? I thought he did something. He did like a, a film of some kind. Yeah, I feel like he did yeah. something. I thought he did something. And I'm like, I'm ready for, for more Rick Moranis. I, was... I am on IMDb. I am finding out now because we need to know. Oh, he has something upcoming. Shrunk. Is in real. Oh. Is in. Okay. Yeah, it's in so that's from his Honey Eye series. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Well, that'll Very be good. good. We can watch that. That'll be good. Brilliant. Okay. He did something called Rush Snakes and Arrows live in Holland in two thousand and eight, and he appeared in the Goldbergs in twenty eighteen. Hmm. And he's done a couple of other bits and pieces, voiceovers mainly. Yeah. Oh, he was in Brother Bear. I didn't realize he was in Brother Bear. Never watched that oh. one. It's a it's one of those Disney ones that very few people have ever seen. Yeah, I feel like Claire, yeah. that was Maybe that was voices. a really good segue that you just set up, oh. mentioning Rick Moranis voice being actors. a voice actor. Because yeah. look, it we need to know. We're actually talking about Anna now. Oh, okay. That audiobook <laughs> was bad. He mispronounced your name. In the first, the first eight seconds. We timed it. Um, well, as you know, Anna was my first novel. And thusly, the first produced audiobook. So I had zero say. Yeah. I didn't get to choose from any variety of narrators. And they didn't ask me about any pronunciations. So what you get Stay. is what you get. That Mistake. is, I haven't listened to it. I've heard things. Um, I've heard, I've heard some some of the delivery from some of the female characters is a little questionable. Like he makes them a, a little too girly, maybe when he's trying to, you know, have yeah. girl voice, which I get for a male narrator to do female voices sure. or you know feminine in, inflected voices. That that's a challenge. But yeah. um, I've had some readers say like. Mm. He settles into it later, maybe, but it, at first, it's like when he does Carmel's voice, it's kind of wow, just yeah. going all in. But yeah. um, I don't but know. you have an audiobook, which is a cool thing. Yes, because yes. and that allows my dad to read the books. So because he it... he was when he read this one, he was still like long haul trucking, so he really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the same narrator does both books. So he listened to all the way through on both of them and still really liked it. So, Well, it's really good, okay. despite the fact that your name was mispronounced. I think, Amanda, we also have to remember, I'm not trying to defend, you know, mispronunciations. It's Athamir. It's Athamir. Um, it's making books accessible at the very it's least it's true it is mm-hmm. wait a minute and how does he say athame athame Anthem- athame, athame. Oh, interesting okay and you you say that word a lot it's <laughs> important it is key to the plot <laughs> yeah it's kind of kaz's whole thing yeah and as long that. as you don't judge I, the book by the narration okay. it's important yeah it's important yeah and at least it's out there in the wild and it's making people actually access it, which is a main thing. Yes. 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 I'm very appreciative to that narrator for all of his hard work through two whole books. Yes. Yes. We also have to remember, Amanda, we hold audiobook narrations to a higher standard. Yeah, we're snobs. Um, I know we're, we're snobs. We are I know complete we are. I think snobs. We've come a long way to, I mean, this book would have been produced in, in you know, 2011, so 12 yeah. years ago. So it it audiobooks just they've gotten a lot better, a lot slicker. There's the production values yeah. are higher. Sometimes you've got full cast narration. I mean they're they're uh they're putting it all out there. Yeah. Remember the days of unabridged on cassette tape. I mean ooh, ooh. Yeah. Not good. Not good. I just I just felt really bad. Because yeah, okay, I've I have narrated a total of three books and a half because there's one that I'm supposed to be working on right now. But, like, if you don't know how to say the author's name, you got to ask, man. 
I, I, I don't think he was given access to me, honestly. Ask anybody. It, it, this was one of those situations where I didn't know what was happening until it was like out. So he, he was never put in touch with me. I, he just didn't have a, he didn't even have an opportunity. I'm yeah. thinking. He couldn't slide into your DMs. Right. There were no yeah, DMs. That wasn't to really a thing. at that yeah. point. No. Yeah, that wasn't really a thing then. No, we've got we we uh, as much as we do, you know, talk about it in the main. I think we need to give him some grace. We do, and it's fine, and it's it's fine. I just like, I was excited when there was you know the the new cover, and I was like, oh, maybe there'll be a new audio book. <laughs> That's only because you have like favorite audiobook narrators you and do. you desperately want that. Oh, what's he called? It's gonna make me brain. What? The the one that you you you've literally stalked on the internet. Steve West. Matt Godfrey. Yes. Oh, Matt Godfrey too. Oh, he would be so good. I know he. Would Matt be Godfrey amazing. would be phenomenal. Yeah. Matt you've Godfrey literally could stalked like Steve West. Nail Kaz. I 100 percent know that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Like, okay, we're campaigning for Matt Godfrey. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Yeah, now. he needs to do it. Let's just ask him. <laughs> just drag him back on you be like hey you know you did that one book i can draw this one right here this this book right here that people can see yeah. in the video did an amazing job on that so like, good. good so, so good. good yeah okay yeah. well i'm i'm glad to know that you did not listen to the book because i feel like your heart might have been a little bit sad I can't listen to any of my books on audio. I can't. I mean that because I have I have a way that it's delivered. Like lines are delivered in my head, and I know that yeah. the narrator's not. I mean they can't freaking read my mind, so I don't because I know it would be very jarring mm. to hear. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take yeah. that bullet for you. <laughs> I mean, although that, that's the only time that's that's the only time that since, it was a literal bullet. But yeah, since then I I've been blessed with excellent excellent narrators. So, so. many good ones. Yeah, yeah. I've I've um since then I've I've gotten you know to choose and every time my first choice has been available. I've gotten very lucky. That's amazing. Ooh, nice. It's nice. amazing. Well, I mean, segueing into your other books. We know the third and final Buffyverse book's coming out next year. Yes. What's April next? April 9th. April and 9th. can you please write Ghostbusters fiction? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're manifesting it. We We're are. manifesting it. We talked about this a lot in our main episode because there were a lot of Buffy references in Anna. And I was like, but there's also Ghostbusters references. And like years down the line she wrote the Buffy books so that means she's gonna have to write the Ghostbusters books and we spent entirely too much time talking about that so um you should go ahead and do that yeah it was super <laughs> it was super fun writing in that podcast the Ghostcasters like they were a delight they were my favorite of the uh ghost podcasts that they have to get into that haunted hotel with I just I love that you know yeah get in losers we're going cast like they're just so cute <laughs> Just yes. the whole, their whole vibe. Um, I really dug. But yeah, so Buffy comes out, what is it called? Um, Against the Darkness is the third and final book in Buffy the Next Generation. And it comes out on April 9th. It was previously supposed to come out in January, like on January 26th. But it got moved. I don't know why. Um, it got moved like two days after I announced the January pub date on my Instagram. And then I'm like, I don't, I'm not changing my posts. I don't care. <laughs> People will figure it out when it doesn't show up. Um, so yes, we've got a little more time. Um, I'm really looking forward to shifting gears and talking about Buffy again this spring. I love Buffy and I'm going to be really super sad to see it, to see it come to an end. But I pull out all the stops in this. I mean, it's the last one. So hell with it. I bring back whoever the heck I want. Yes. And um, if there are favorite characters that you've been waiting to see, you know, I bring back at least three of them who haven't appeared in the series oh my God. so far. And I just have fun with every single one. So there's only one that I never need to see ever again, and that's Riley, because I am not a Riley fan. No, Riley who? I don't even mention him. Oh, honestly, sure. anybody else can come back. I... 
<laughs> if you get the chance, I don't know if it's going to come over to the United States, but I really hope it does. But there's a I, I saw at the theatre Buffy revamped, and it's a one man show. Um, he plays Spike, and then he goes through yes. all of the series of Buffy, and he does it in an hour and a half, and I literally laughed from start to finish he throws in songs he plays every character in some way shape or form and it is absolutely brilliant and if you ever get the chance to go and see if he does tour and i hope he does go over to the us you must see it he just like oh yeah and there was riley <laughs> it's just yes exactly it's so funny but yeah if you get the chance to go and see that i rec- recommend it all right i will keep my eye out i've he- i've heard about it um for sure like people within the Buffy fandom have been talking about it and, and you know going to see it and wondering if it's any good so yeah I'll, I'll you can my... tell he's a fan he is a, he can tell oh, he's, his yeah. comedy chops are absolutely spot on and you know I know this is the second time at least he's toured in the UK and I missed the first time it didn't come local enough for me um so you can tell he's rehearsed you know he's done it and because he's comedy he's he's getting every point every beat that needs to be hit he hits to perfection but it still feels very fresh in the performance so it, it he was absolute genius and he co-wrote it as well so there's obvious love for the, the source material it's so funny it's so funny it's fantastic <sighs> sorry i'm thinking about it and i'm laughing in my head <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, so so what's after Buffy? And you've got uh, Champion of Fate. Yes, we can't yes. forget about Champion of Fate. Yes, Champion of Fate is out right now. It's my, um, I, I mean, I think it's super fun. My super fun epic tale of um, immortal warrior women and the young girl who wants to become one and also her bitey horse. Her bitey horse is very important <laughs> to me. I always mention him, you know, every time I talk about the book, I'm like, don't forget about the bitey horse because he's my favorite. <laughs> Uh, so he's doodled Buffy, into my copy indeed oh my goodness uh, sometimes I try to doodle him and he turns out looking like a Doberman but I think <laughs> yours looks like a horse it was so. beautiful yeah good Good job you have to send me pictures uh, so in September I think should be Champion of Fate 2 and after that mm, Ghostbusters not a clue. I, I am talking with my Disney editor on something, but it that's very, very early days. Um, Does it involve I, Yzma? Please tell me it involves Yzma. You would do her justice so well. I love Yzma. I love Yzma. She is my favorite Disney Same. villain. But, um, Same! No, not Yzma. <laughs> but I, it's, it's another one of my Disney favorites, so I'm 100% hoping that it goes through. And then I'm working up a proposal for my next young adult for my my Harper Collins editor. So fingers crossed that she'll like it and let me do it because it's um it's kind of zany. It's like it's like a buddy cop comedy, but make it a fantasy. Yes. So so oh. in my brain I'm calling it Rush Hour 4 God Body Edition. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. Oh the cost of stitch. There, I've already pre ordered it. Even though it doesn't exist yet. <laughs> With just that gift where you just do the, the, the money throw. Yes. Yes. If yeah. your name is on something, we're like, okay, yeah, we've already bought it. <laughs> Who cares what it is? I love you guys. <laughs> I remember when the first Buffy book came out. I didn't even know Spike was in it. I'd already pre-ordered it and I was still waiting for it to come. And one of our friends went, oh, I've just, list- I've just listened to the audio book and Spike's in it. And I'm like, I didn't know Spike was in it. You've just spoiled it. She was like, did you not read the synopsis? I'm like, no, it's a fucking Dara Blair book. I just order it. You should buy it. She's like, I'm sorry. You should buy it. You know, liar. Yeah, oh. Spike is the most fun. He's the most fun to write. Spike can do it all. I love him. As a character, he's just, he's like, just clay. Anything that you need somebody to do, you can have Spike do it because he can be anything you want. He can be utterly badass. He can be totally inept. He can be super smart or super no, not smart. And it's all <laughs> keeping with the character. That's Let's it. He can be the villain if he needs to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he can, he can be, be the hero. Righteous. He can be super morally questionable. And it all he's been all of these things within the series. And so you can do anything with him on page. 
Okay. Um, I have, I have a question about something that I just bought on Amazon um, earlier this week because I didn't know that it existed, and so then I bought it. No. Oh. Uh, Sleepwalk Society. How did you buy that? I took the rights back. It's not supposed to be available. I think it's a used copy. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I bought that. Yeah, okay. Uh, it, was, it was only like $4. Good. Because it's yeah, used. It's going to be super weird for you. Um, don't, I don't even know. Like, maybe not. Like, maybe don't. Maybe. <laughs> Just own it? Just have it? Just like. Look at it and go, huh, isn't that weird? It, it looks like, um, the cover looks like a, uh, kind of like a brochure for a retirement community. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, that one's just plain. There there used to be like a, an, a, a brown, like a grayscale image of like an old couple having a glass of wine. Oh. Um, it's a college student. My publisher was a small press publisher. The budget was extremely small, like micro microscopic. They are wonderful people. I still adore them, a hundred percent. So great, so fabulous to work with. But it it just you know it was like it's almost like like I wrote it when I was a kid, and now I'm like this is really not in keeping with any of the other stuff that I do. So I'm just gonna take it back. I'll pull it off and keep it for myself. And well, I'm sorry because now I will soon own a copy. <laughs> A used phone. That is, thank you. It's I mean, coming. yeah. What the heck? Now you've seriously, you've got it all. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is it. I oh. couldn't. I I couldn't claim to have all, all of your books if I didn't have that one. <laughs> you have it all. No, it is about um, a group of friends coming home to their hometown after their first year away at different colleges, and like you know just that time in your life when stuff's changing and can you really go back to the way it used to be when you were in high school things are going to get weird yeah i'm excited i'm excited to read baby kandara mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh love it love it i'm sorry if like people try to you know, like clamor and get it now no no you, no because no. you took I, it away I don't think it'll be, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's unappealing. So I'm not worried about that. <laughs> People also, who read this stuff probably are like fantasy readers, horror readers, yeah. not, um, yeah, yeah. So I'm enjoying the, if you like this, you might like this recommendations based on it. <laughs> what are they? What are they? Big Love in a Small Town. Uh, the Sheik's American Daughter. What? The Oil Prince. <laughs> Okay. The Sheik's Choice. It has, Princess it has no the connections books. to Big Oil. It has no <laughs> connections to OPEC. Um, there are no... Are there sheiks? natural truth. <laughs> yeah, there are no sheiks in it. Uh, they don't travel to oil-producing countries. Um, interesting. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Anthony. But to be fair, I love looking at recommendations and books that I've read and go, what? But if you go on Goodreads, you'll see a lot of the people who've read this also have read this. And it's probably because both me and Amanda and Fictional Hangover's Goodreads accounts are pretty much exactly the same at this point. So we've influenced the Goodreads recommendations algorithm. Right. Yes. Yeah. You guys are like controlling the algorithm. Yeah. Well, it's otherwise it's just really weird. Yeah, we need some power. Some some small power. It's it's basically useless. Power. Someone's gotta do something about the algorithms. I mean Yeah. I think we'd all be better off if it was you. Yeah, probably. We do have really good taste in that mm. our favorite author is you. No. <laughs> wait, wait. Like, if everybody would just be reading things covered in blood or yeah, gold, yeah. You guys have like, viscera everywhere. Mm -hmm. You have your both hands just solidly on the horror pulse. I love it. Yeah. It's good for the skin. <laughs> it was good enough for Elizabeth Bathory. It's good enough for us. I mean, come on. The adrenaline. The adrenaline. Linking that back to the first Buffy book. That was good. Nice. Uh, that was good. That was really good. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I've literally pulled my side laughing. <laughs> we should probably wrap it up then since Claire's dying. 
<laughs> oh no, go for it. It's fine. I'll be fine in two minutes. <laughs> That is, though, like all the questions that we have to ask, too. And we actually asked them. Or, wait, no. Hold on. We talked about your anniversary collect or book of this one, plus a short story. Are there any more of those? Any more stories? Or it's kind of novella-ish, but any, any other additional stories oh, coming? Like in the world of Kaz, um, people who have read the novella are asking, like, when are we going to get a full length Kaz book? Which I think would be really cool, but it would be like kind of strange because it would be an adult book now. Yeah. It's like 27 and sure, I could, I could do that, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know if there's even an audience for that. Um, the novella kind of opens things up to some stuff um, that, that, you know, I don't believe in endings really until they're dead. So since Kaz isn't dead, of course I put some stuff in there for him to go and do later after the novella's over, just because he's he's going to keep on living. But, but that, I'm not that sure. Doesn't count because um, the ghosts are dead and they're still around. It, so that's it's, true. It's, I guess Kaz could go on indefinitely, but it, it depends on how this anniversary edition does. Like if enough people read the novella and like it, and there's some demand, maybe I'll do a little something like if they decide to do an anniversary edition to match that for girl of nightmares, maybe I'll do a little something in the back of that one. Oh, um, but I don't know. It's not, I'm not sure. I have other short stories coming out next year. I've got a story in the horror anthology, which I think you guys will really enjoy. Um, the anthology is called The White Guy Dies First. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's all um, familiar horror tropes um, turned on their heads, uh, sometimes in, you know, it, in a diversity context. Um, the only rule was that the white guy has to die first. Yes. And uh, my story is kind of a send up of the classic Japanese Korean horror films of like the early 2000s like oh. the rain and the grudge like i was always like i love those but i was always like why does she have so much hair it's always the <laughs> hair with these women so yeah so i i like i i'm gonna write a like a pastiche of a revenge ghost and it's yes yeah it's, it's fun i like oh. it I, I'm, yep. I'm just gonna so. say that it's due and according to me because did you see both of us reach straight for our yeah, phones we did. to get the yeah, pre-orders in Apparently it's out August next year. Perfect. Oh. Whose birthday month is August and would like as their present? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Conversation. Yes. I don't know how many author copies I will get. Sometimes I only get no, one. No, 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 no. You I don't even need to send me and I will buy it. That's fine. Yeah. But you're coming on in August to talk about your short story. Yeah, you have to. We'll even, we, 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 a live. That, live episode. A li <gasps> Feels like we need Ooh. to have a live episode. Yeah, I would love yeah. to. That short story was super, super, super fun. I can't wait to read the rest of the stories in this collection. Um, according to the editor, Terry Benton Walker, like everybody just killed it. And the lineup is fantastic. We're very, very close to a cover. He's promised. Like, we... Oh, there's a Kaylin Barron one as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, she's good. That's exciting. It's going to be an excellent reading. Yeah. You're really good oh, at short stories, by the way. We love anthologies. Way. We love Thank anthologies. You. I yeah. I really enjoy writing them, so I'm I'm always happy when anybody asks me to do one. <laughs> I I love short stories. I love anthologies, and I, don't get me wrong, I enjoy a series. But sometimes, you know, having just those little snippets and tasters, oh, mm, it's so satisfying because mm -hmm. it, it it's just. In a busy time when my brain is just needs to turn off for five minutes, picking up a short story or an anthology really helps calm it down. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm quite into it at the moment because I'm just so full of busy that yeah. I just I need I need those instant gratifications. Yeah. I've been reading Stephen King and Joe Hill short stories to my husband. Oh, that's fun. Like when we go on like little vacations or anything or just like long that's car so trips, I'm like, you want to read a story? And it's just like a nice little chunk. That's and then it's then it's over. That's what that's what Jacob and I do with our trip that oh. we just took. Like, I mean, we were listening to the audiobook, but we listened to Stephen King short stories, and it was it was perfect. That's God, that's precious. Which collection that's were you listening to? Um, we did. Um, it was stories from the night shift. I think the I think the collection was called Graveyard Shift, and it had the story with oh. the rats and a story from Salem's Lot. 
which was really good. Um, and then on the way home, we listened to the entirety of The Mist because we had we had that much time on the drive. So it was perfect. And then we watched cool. The Mist again when we got home because that movie is <laughs> gotta... so yeah. good. Yeah. I love the ending of it. I love the ending of the movie. Right? Ah. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, it's such a good ending. And I like that it's completely opposite to the end of the of the book. You know, it's not like <laughs> not like the National Guard is just going to roll in or are they? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. Gosh. Good times. Good times with Stephen King road trips. Yes. Highly recommend. Yeah. Any Great. I think that should be a podcast in it's itself. You go on a road trip, listen to Stephen King, and then talk about it. Oh, I'm there. And Joe Hill. I love Joe Hill too. So, yeah. Uh. I mean, yeah, we were listening to, well, not listening to, I was reading out Full Throttle, which has a couple of the stories that they worked on together. Ooh. So, um, and he also includes a bunch of like kind of detailed afterwards about each story. So he talks about what it's like to work with his dad. And, you know, that's really interesting to me. Oh, I love that to hear really that. Cool. Craft stuff. I do like the background information. Yeah, I need to. I need to put that one. When on you were list. saying about the Japanese long hair, by the way, it came to mind. I don't know if you've seen. There's a second middle grade graphic novel called Unfamiliar. We've had it on the um, the show, and we're doing volume two next week. But there's a Japanese horror ghost in it, and she's got the long hair. And she crawls out ring style, and the way that they like put her to rest, like you know, calm her soul is one of the characters ties her hair back and she went, the only reason that she's, you know, pissed off is because she's got hair on her face. This is really cute panel. Relatable. Relatable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. If your hair won't, mm, it's, a, it's a day ruiner. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 That, oh, that sounds like a PSA right there. Yes. That, that, I like it. Yeah. It's I haven't seen it. Too. I'll check it out. Yeah. It's really cute. And the it's, you'll, second you'll one, read it in about 10 minutes. Yeah, and the second perhaps. one just recently came out. Famil- yeah. from, what is it called? Unfamiliar. 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 Haley, Unfamiliar. By Haley Newsom. It's honestly, it's worth, it's worth 10 minutes of read of your time. That's a, a good title, but it's also one I could, like, unfamiliar. Got it. Witch Planchet. Yes. And the half lizard, we did half, um half taxi term listen we did a cosplay we did a cosplay video of this one the one where with, with the I had the eyeball on my head and the bangs that's from that I had the hat that wouldn't stay on my head that was behind <laughs> me because I threw it off <laughs> in a rage and I just hat. left it there you are so mad about that, that hat I will be wearing it next week on your page I'm gonna have to look back on your page because I didn't see that one I wonder yeah. if the algorithm is hiding you from me sometimes oh, no you know some... I think that. The algorithm does, it does yeah, hide us because does. we refuse to pay the algorithm. <laughs> if you don't go through like and say like I wanna see more of this on my feed, then they just don't. Yeah. And it it sucks. I yeah, but we them. Um, it means I wanna see it. Yeah, we did a exactly like we had a new person join our Patreon, so we had to do a video for her and that's the book that she selected that we do, so it was good. Um, excellent. Good yeah. That's a nice Patreon perk. Hello. Hello, future Patreon subscribers. That's a yeah. Really good... Come on. Someone else do it. We only have like... <laughs> we dare you. We, we challenge do. you. We beg you? Should we beg? That's, that's yeah. a good thing too. We need... We need We're not to... adverse to begging. No. Or bribery. To be fair, we haven't done a, a, a hashtag always be plugging for a while. It's true. And there, Kendara has just done it for us, so... Yay. Thank you. That's why we love you. This is why you have me back. Right. right. Seven times. Seven freaking times. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. That is crazy. But you're amazing and we love you. So Well, I, I appreciate you having having me back. Um every time. I look forward to it. Over so. and over and over and over and over. Have we missed anything? I don't think so. No. Well, we haven't done Champion of Fate yet, but again, that one, ju- that one just we need to just do came out. second and a book as well. And we need to get back into Buffy. Yeah, we've got two Buffy. Well, we've got one Buffy book definitely, and the third one to do when yeah. that comes out. But like, I don't think we've missed <laughs> any series. Combine it. 
if you want to just combine the last two Buffy books and we'll just like we could we have and we have done that before we could do that we could do that yeah although it's really good and I like to talk about it are we planning 2024 <laughs> We okay. are. I am always happy to talk more about we, we, whatever is uh, convenient for the two of you. We need to get the double figures. We need to. We need to get you into the double figures, we and do. that will be the most expedient way of doing yes, it. Yes, it's just the year of Gnar Blake. If no, I mean <gasps> we'd have to do like I'd have to do some kind of like huge giveaway or something. Yeah, it needs just to happen. To double digits. That's just too ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got a variety of short stories that we could do, and we like to do those with live episodes. So, <laughs> I didn't know. I, I, I'm a hundred percent getting hidden. Like you're a hundred percent getting hidden from. I'm immediately when we get off of here, I'm gonna have to go through and like hit like show more. Did you see the live episode from July then, where we actually were in the same room? No, I did. I did see that one. Okay. That one I did. Oh, okay. But none of the other one. Like I that's I don't just, even know if I've seen any content. We've only done one we've only done one other live, haven't we, since then? Yeah, for we, Halloween. yeah, we did the Halloween one. And I had really scary fucking teeth. I had horns. Is on. that the one where you guys were with Dawn and everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I did see that one too. Okay, All right. Good. Maybe that's I'm getting good. mad at the algorithm for nothing. But Maybe. I, no, just get, I would still be mad at the algorithm. I've right, definitely still... missed some stuff, so I'm gonna have to yeah. go back yeah. and and take a peek at the stuff that we missed. Yeah, definitely. We do have another live coming up as well. We in December, do. I don't think we've officially announced it yet. Have we, we haven't, but it's happening, and it's fun. Space. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, yes. listeners, yes. watchers. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. I think you just need to be the third host, just every now and then. You know, what I mean, you don't have to always be here, but it's clear. Does that mean we get out of summarizing duty for <laughs> top? No, we couldn't no. force her to do that because if we forced her to summarize I could, others... like, I could come on in like a, a DJ capacity, you know, like I spin us in with the with the summaries. I could be like the Ed McMahon to your Johnny Carson. Yes. And then and I could just like bop out until the end. Yeah. If you could do an awkward rap, that would be good. Oh, oh God. We love an awkward rap. <laughs> that would be the only kind of rap I could do. It's fine. <laughs> Okay, I think that's oh, the Oh, my end. raps to generate into the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, to oh, be fair. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the only that's what one. I would have said it. That would be the rhythm. I would be rapping to that rhythm. <laughs> It'll work. It'll be fine. It's fine. All right. Everything's fine. We need to stop talking. <laughs> that's the end. It's, so it's to generate to so badly. <laughs> that's... That's the end of this episode. Okay, oh my god. Thank you for joining us. You have to come back a million more times. You are a queen you and we are. love you. Yes, yes. I love you both as well. And Yay. it's always a joy. So thank you guys so much for having me back. The fictional hangover. Thank you. So that's it for this bonus episode of Fictional Hangover. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. Join us next time as we discuss Unfamiliar Volume 2 by Haley Newsom. Look out for our Would You Rather polls on social media. Don't forget about our book club and monthly challenges on Facebook. Be sure to visit our shop on Redbubble at fictionalhangover.redbubble.com for all your favorite fictional hangover-themed merchandise and become a patron of ours on Patreon at patreon.com slash fictionalhangover. Until next time, remember, the only cure for a fictional hangover is another book. You can find us at fictionalhangover.com. Follow us on Instagram, threads, TikTok and YouTube at Fictional Hangover. And find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fictional hangover. If you like this episode, check out our others and be sure to rate, review and subscribe so you don't miss out. And finally, special thanks to Liz Emerson for our music. You can find her on Facebook and Patreon. Thanks for listening.